Another very active week in DC fast chargers throughout the United States. Let's go ahead and get into what's new. In speaking with some of the people who had out of spec, it was decided this will likely become a weekly update. And I wanted to break up the monotony a little bit of the background. So I'm here in my backyard today and I'll try to get some different locations in order to shoot these videos just for some variety. Starting off, Pilot Flying J opened a very important station and it was a sleeper site for me. I did not know it was under construction. It just appeared in the Alternative Fuels Data Center database. It's in Ocala, Florida on Interstate 75. And for people who are familiar with the trek into Florida, the most popular locales are obviously in Central Florida in Orlando or Tampa St. Pete or in the extreme southern portion like uh, Miami-Dade, Key West, Fort Lauderdale areas. And in order to get there, you need to cross the very desolate Panhandle section, either coming through Interstate 95 or Interstate 75 are the two major interstate thoroughfares going north and south. And in the stretch of 75 coming out of Georgia, very slim pickings as far as chargers go if you're not in a Tesla. And so pilot opening a station in Ocala was of significance and a lot of people were chiming in. One viewer submitted me these photos of their Lyric charging at the station, newly opened just this past week. And so a gap in the map filled in with a brand new PIP. Secondly, IANA opened, it wasn't this past week, it was the week previous, but I neg neglected to mention it on last week's update, a new station in Valdosta, Georgia. And they're also working on one in Warner Robins. A uh, viewer of the channel recently took a trek to Florida and stopped by both those locations. So let's go ahead and bring in Scott Owens. So Scott, how are you? I'm doing good, Walter. How are you doing? Doing well. And how was your trip to Florida? It was good. It's my second trip to Florida this year. It seems like I can't stop road tripping in an EV. Pretty soon you're going to move there. That's what happened to me. No, I've done that. I lived in Orlando for two years, many, many years ago. I, I like visiting Florida. <laughs> <laughs> so on your trip uh, south, you passed through two IANA locations, one open, one under construction. Very quickly, can you uh, give us a brief overview of the Warner Robins location that you found to be yes. under construction. Yes, I stopped by Warner Robins just to check on it. I've, I've got a lot of Warner Robins in my history over the years. And uh, so I was curious how it was going. It's not it's 90 miles from Atlanta. Be a good stop on the way down. And uh, it was very disappointing in that having looked at plug share and seeing the fences with the on and banners on it, I was kind of expecting it to be close to open. And instead, I found the opposite. It was a, it looked abandoned. The Diana signs were all gone. Grass was growing up in the ditches that had been dug. There was still a fence around everything. That had not been taken down, but it clearly looked like it had, been, had not been touched in weeks. Now, I think since you've probably seen this as well on PlugShare, somebody reported just the past couple of days that backhoes were back on site. So that's encouraging. Maybe they were just on pause. I, I was concerned that it had been canceled, but that's good. Yeah, once you get the backhoes on site, there's a sunbelt bill behind that. So someone in accounting is going to force it forward. Right. So, yeah, hopefully we're going to see some progress there. <clears throat> but the one that caught my attention, uh, Ayana posted into social media a really pretty drone picture of the Valdosta, Georgia location. You stopped there as well, correct? I did. And I have stopped in Valdosta over the years on my trips to Florida. And mm -hmm. uh, in January, I stopped by there. And the lone thing there was, uh, was uh, four stalls with Electrify America. And now they've got... Iana, and there's a Circle K down the street too, but the Iana is 10 stalls and it's gorgeous. It's in the parking lot of a uh, Ashley Furniture right behind a Cheddar's restaurant about a quarter mile down the street from a McDonald's and some other things as well. So uh, it worked out nice. It'd be nicer if it were, I, you know, it'd be ideal if it were a full rechargery with its own thing like Garner, North Carolina or something like that. But I don't know that it's necessary in that uh, you've got all that other stuff nearby. And, uh, we stopped on the way down and I, we, we walked a quarter mile down to uh, McDonald's, had a breakfast sandwich, walked a quarter mile back, got some good exercise, had a snack and the whole charging was done in that period of time. It was extremely fast. And I was very excited because it was my first experience with IANA and it was my first experience with plug and charge with IANA. I was going to ask you, yeah, plug and charge. Tell us about the plug and charge experience. It worked flawlessly. I've, uh, I've used plug and charge with my BMW with uh, Electrify America and 
it seems to take a little while to handshake. Not not a whole long time, but most of the convenience is not speed. It's just the fact that you don't have to push a bunch of buttons and figure out what stall you're at, which is good. That's that's a benefit. But this was fast. It literally just uh, I plugged it in, walked over to the to the charging station. It's an Alpatronic charging station. It had a little silhouette already up. Plug and charge authenticated, and it was charging in no time. The the only delay was Iana has a a banner that comes up saying how much it's going to cost, and it starts a countdown clock. So you still don't have to touch anything. It truly is plug and charge, but you have to wait 15 seconds. It doesn't have an accept button. It has a decline button. So you've got 15 seconds to decline it, or you have to wait out the 15 seconds. But oh, okay. So you don't actually have to press that button. I thought you did. You have, nope. You don't have to press the button. Okay. Got it. it. The countdown to decline. It'd be nice if you just could either accept or have a checkbox that said, I'm, a, I'm an experienced Iona guy. Don't ask me this again. <laughs> but And uh, you drive a BMW i x is that correct i do and typically how fast speeds do you see like 200 kilowatts it's it's i think it's specced it slightly under i haven't looked it up lately but i think it's okay. at like 195 and i think i've gotten 195 on it maybe once um yeah. and it was at an electrify america 350 kilowatt charger um i know that um i don't remember what my state of charge was going in and why i peaked at that but i did it was like you know pretty soon right into the charge but for the most part, I tend to get, you know, between 160 to 185, something like that. So I think I, I think I topped out here at 180, but at Pilot Flying J's, I get about 180, 185. So I don't know. I think maybe that's just a BMW thing. That it, it could that be the conditioning of the battery or something. But yeah, I did see the charging curves and it looks like you tapped out right at about 180 and then started yeah. to dial down from there. So it seems, you know, about what you'd expect. I guess, and, and I preconditioned. So I did all the stuff you're supposed to do, and the state of charge was kind of low on both my charges. I charged going down there and coming back. Oh, okay. And so I did it twice, and it Terrific worked. Perfect location. Twice. Like it, as you say, that location right near the uh, panhandle of Florida, where things get pretty desolate, is a terrific place to top off before right. retail. Or into Georgia. Yeah. So yeah. It's, it's it's kind of if, if you're going down to Florida and you're coming out of Atlanta, I can make it from my house to Valdosta without having to stop to charge so i can so i can go on a perfect i in pretty good yeah and uh the station itself it obviously canopy and garbage cans and squeegees and uh relatively close to amenities um so protected from the rain protected from the sun sound about right it is and it it had the trash cans and squeegees the squeegees were out but you know it's a brand new oh. station so i give them a pass it, you know i'm assuming they got to figure that out but uh it's also right next door to a walmart which is where the Electro Electrify America charges That's are. That's definitely curious, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you can see them. You can see them from the eye, or you can see them. It's, it's, it's a distance, but you can see them. And uh, the Circle K is right down the street. So I, Valdosta has kind of come along in six months. From when I went at Christmas time, there was one option, and now there's three. So things are building. Yeah, 95, when we go to Florida, it was uh, the 95 route up to um, <clears throat> Jacksonville, and then Space Coast, uh, you turn right to go into Orlando. And uh, there's some uh, slim picking uh, stretches where only Electrify Americas that are uh, derated are your only option. And normally right. there's queuing there and it's, it's pretty tough. So it's nice to see some of these other CPOs start to show up and uh, fill in some of those gaps, add additional capacity with newer chargers. Well, on that side, I don't really go that way unless um, I've got family that lives in South Carolina. So when I visit them and take them on road trips, my elderly parents. I yeah, 75 is better route in Florida for you. Right. But but the 95 thing, they've got the BP Pulse uh, travel, uh, mm. travel Centers of America's opening up and you've got an Iona station in Brunswick, Georgia, and there's a couple of Planet Flying J's just open. So all this stuff just it's exploding. It's exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Plus the uh, Tesla Supercharger Network opening up to other OEMs as well. It's definitely been a um, change of fortunes as of late through 2024, 2025. Yeah, that's a sure. With us BMW folks, we still don't have that, but it, 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 ironically, it's kind of getting overcome by events. I've been anticipating it, eagerly awaiting it, and I'm kind of getting to where I don't care because everything else is building up around it. Yeah, everything's blowing up. Yes, sir. Well, much appreciated for your experience at the right. Valdosta Ayana location, brand new station, open up for travelers through the summer. Okay. Thank you, Walter. Take, Take care. care. Keep doing what you're doing. It's always exciting to see new Iona stations come to life when such rapid successions like that. So Warner Robins and Valdosta are definitely going to be welcome additions to the 75 corridor coming out of Georgia. Also sticking with Iona, there was late breaking news that Rivian has, and it says partnered with Iona. Now in the article, which was flagged through a Google search of mine that searches for Iona 
as a Inside EV article which referenced a TechCrunch interview because there were specific quotes from a Rivian executive talking about a partnership with IANA. Now, I don't know if that means that IANA is going to be the ninth automaker joining or if they're just integrating plug and charge. It could be either way. And the way I was looking at the article, I can't really determine which way is going to go. There's no official press releases from IANA and these quotes are not coming in an official communications channel. It's just quotes from an executive. So it might be that there will be a Rivian announcement indicating joining the IANA group, um, or it might be just like Ford where the plug in charge feature is being unlocked for Rivian vehicles. Because Ford recently went through the integration with IANA and they can do plug and charge at their stations now as well. So a little bit unclear there. So we'll have to keep a eye on it, watch that space to see uh, what's coming between IANA and Rivian. But at the very least, Rivian owners will be able to do plug and charge as uh, Scott was mentioning he was able to do with his BMW at IANA stations. Next, in some pretty aggressive news, the CPO called Red E was not posting any updates in the Alternative Fuels Data Center database, but I had been noticing that there were new Red E stations opening up. And I assumed they were just either backlogged with the Alternative Fuels Data Center database updates or something. And just this past week, they released 64 new DC fast charger stations into the Alternative Fuels Data Center database, which I mentioned on my personal channel. After which, a couple of people started to mention that an LX, the um, I think it's an Italian power company, which ran Juicebox, who pulled out of the States very abruptly and left a bunch of stranded assets, is uh, now being taken over to some extent by Red E. So there's a couple of stations in Michigan, which are now being taken over by Red E. So I'm not sure if that's going to be all the NLX stations or just a portion of them, but it's nice to see because I actually noticed in the Alternative Fuels Data Center database, an LX had 25 stations listed in there. And just this past week, it decreased to 15. And because they have no staff here, they can't really make those adjustments. So I'm assuming what happened is Ready went in and took those over. And as a part of the larger Ready update, a portion of the NLX stations transferred over to them. So, although there were some stranded assets, it looks like there's some other CPOs stepping up in order to take care of the customers that were abandoned by an Alex and Juicebox. Also, BP Pulse has several things going on, one of which is they released into social media a brand new website because they had been piggybacking on the BP uh, commercial or the BP fleet website in the North American market, but now they have BP Pulse North America's native website, which is nice to see. And it's, you know, basically bare bones now, but at least they have their math in there and their own branding and uh, basically becoming their own entity within the BP, larger BP organization. So good to see that that step had finally been taken. It was kind of a, a bit of an annoyance for me that we were working on someone else's website for a CPO that had so much growth occurring in it, but now that change has finally occurred. Additionally, Duarte, California, and Miriam is Duarte. Duarte. <laughs> I just had to ask my wife for pronunciation. She's a native Spanish speaker. Um, is seen significant progress. A viewer named Neptune provided me these photos. And if you look at the first one, there is a building in the background that has BP branding on it labeled Lounge. So this is not a Giga Hub. This is just a BP Pulse Greenfield gas station or uh, refueling station that is built from the ground up with really distinctive canopies with wood finishing on the posts, a very distinctively architected lounge. So it's not just like some container shoved in there. It was very purposefully uh, designed and built. Uh, canopy covered stalls and a really nice flow in the uh, property. I mean, this is a very premium experience coming out of BP Pulse. It's located in the northeastern portion of the Los Angeles metropolitan area. And uh, very impressed with what BP Pulse has been bringing to market as of late. Additionally, there's been additional 
progress made at the O'Hare Airport outside of Chicago. And these pictures were provided from a viewer named Jim. Um, I don't think I'm allowed to use his last name, but uh, he said it was okay to use his first name. With uh, progress on the canopy, we have dispensers in the ground. The tritium dispensers are actually in the ground. And we see multiple Alpitronic hyperchargers on property in boxes. And it looks like what's gonna happen is the tritium will be in the row closest to the convenience store and the Alpitronic chargers will be in the row closest to the adjoining interstate. And once again, this location is immediately adjacent to a very large 50 plus stall Tesla supercharger at the adjoining Holiday Inn Express. So this one property is just going to have a massive amount of charging infrastructure available, which is nice immediately adjacent to the airport. So very excited to see all this uh, come online. Lastly, in my private channel, I did an update where a CPO called Gravity, or with an I at the end, G-R-A-V-I-T-I, not the company from Manhattan that does the 500 kilowatt chargers, but some other CPO had done a whole bunch of charging installations uh, in the Alternative Fuels Data Center database, all in the state of Texas. And I didn't know anything about them. And similarly, viewers started to chime in and we got these pictures of a gravity station, which has been in the ground for a while, but uh, I guess they just got around similar to Ready to posting the updates into the Alternative Fuels Data Center database, and there's dozens of them. So it looks like a new CPO is starting to spring up around uh, Texas in the Houston and Metroplex around Dallas, Fort Worth. So tons of activity going on. This is really only a portion of it. I could probably keep going for an hour. I'm going to try to keep these relatively brief, though, and just cover the highlights of what's going on in the past week. So this past week, we got the pilot in Ocala. We got the Valdosta, Valdosta Georgia, the Rivian partnership with Ayana, the BP Pulse getting a new website, and the Duarte and O'Hare Airport, and Gravity Charging finally starting to open stations and post into the Alternative Fuels Data Center database throughout Texas, around Houston, and the Metroplex. Thanks for watching.